Hi everybody and welcome to this week's video. Now as this title suggests, this week I'm going to give you five of the tips that I think will really help you improve your wildlife photography. Um, now, I've not done one of these before and the reason for that, I think there's a lot of them out there, especially on YouTube, and a lot of them, in fact most of them have really good points, you know, things like getting down low for um, eye contact with animals and doing a lot of these shooting either early in the day or late in the afternoon when animals are more active and that's all fine and will all help you improve your wildlife photography but what prompted this video for me was I wasn't supposed to be doing this video this week I was actually um, going to be shooting mountain hares up in Derbyshire and I planned that meticulously as I thought um, to get these images and as you'll probably see from the, the video that you're looking at now um, that wasn't the only thing that went wrong as regards there being a blizzard up on Bleaklo when I was trying to take images but despite all my planning I didn't come back with any images and I was to be fair I was a little bit worried I was I was wondering what the hell I'd done wrong I mean I've been up to Bleaklo hundreds of times, I've taken images of hares up there hundreds of times and the only variable that was different this time was that there was snow because they, they're the images that I hadn't got and that's the images that I was looking for so that was the variable that I had not, not encountered before but I thought I'd covered that pretty well I'd done my research and you know from what I knew in the past about the hares I was 99% confident I was going to come back with images anyway I'll get into that a little bit later but it, what it did it got me thinking about well, what have I done wrong what have I missed and from that came five points that I think will help you improve your wildlife photography some of them are pretty similar to some stuff you've seen before but I'm fairly sure there was some that you've not heard woodpecker uh, that you've not heard before so anyway with that let's crack on I don't want to make this a long video but if you pick at least one thing up from it then you know all well and good first one is probably one that you've heard many times before and that is about equipment and it's a question I get asked a lot is well you know the kits just too expensive now I'm a firm believer in the fact that as long as you can afford a digital SLR even if it's an old model or a basic you know um, first sort of in, intro to a digital SLR model you know one of the basic ones then as long as you can do that and you can afford up a 300mm lens you can make a start with wildlife photography and the reason I say that is because I think that if you start with that kit it'll make you in the long run a better photographer and certainly a better wildlife photographer you know, uh, that you can you can buy a, a 500 mil lens or whatever and spend an awful lot of money on it. But if you're if you do that from the start and rely on that, then you're going to miss out on other things that I think that could improve your photography more than the kit. So, for instance, a good example is if you um, want to get pictures of brown hairs, you can shoot from a car with a 500 mil lens into a field and you'll probably get a shot now with a 300 mil lens what you're going to have to do is get closer to that hair so you're going to have to improve your field skills your field craft you're going to have to know things like the first thing i'd tell you about shooting um, images of brown hairs that is if, if i'm walking i walk to a field and i see a hair in the middle of the field if i walk into that field the hair is going to shoot off now if i get on the floor and crawl 90% of the time that hair will stop there because it doesn't feel threatened so you can improve in other areas is what I'm saying and what you will then find is if you if you upgrade your kit you get some extra money and you think well I really do enjoy this I'll get a 400mm lens or a 500mm lens or I'll get a better camera all it'll do it'll just make your life easier you know those sh shots that you had to work really hard at will suddenly become pretty easy and you can then advance on to other things so don't get you know tied up with kit and I need to have this and I need to have that you know a 300mm kit lens type um, lens for most manufacturers you can get for a couple of hundred quid 
and it, in fact I shoot with a, a Canon 70D which you know I picked up for about 250 quid I think off eBay and the lens is a, a Sigma 100-400 which cost me about 650 quid I think it was a manufacturer refurbished or something like that it wasn't brand spanking new um, and I do fine with that now I could get a Canon 100-400 one of the new ones and all it would do is make my life that little bit easier so you know I don't subscribe to the fact that you need to have the best kit you can get away quite easily with basic kit and just improve in other areas you know of your photography right I think point two we've already touched on to to some extent and that is really to improve your knowledge and, and what I mean by that is, is if you're going out for a, uh, to take images of a particular species, then try and find out all you can about it. So try and find out where it lives, what time of year it's there potentially. Sometimes things move around, sometimes things migrate in and disappear out. Um, you know, when the breeding season is, is it easier to take images during that time? You know, specific things like that. I mean, the examples I could give is things like, um, if you want images of badgers, well badgers are the diurnal but at, at most of the time they're nocturnal so you'll see them at night more. So most of the year they come out when it's dark. Now the best time to see badgers is in June when it's the, the sort of longest day of the year when there's more daylight because their feeding time at night is then cut down. You're more likely to see them coming out earlier when it's still light. So, you know, because they have to feed, they've not got as much dark hours, darkness hours to feed, so they'll come out when it's, when it's still light, um, late in the afternoon, evening. So, you know, if you're gonna take pictures of badgers, then that's the first thing you're gonna say is, right, well, the best time to do that is gonna be at that time of year. And that can be said the same for other types of animal as well. So, the more you know about an animal and its habits, the better chance you're gonna have of getting images. And, you know, to be fair, the, the, the information is all, is all there, it's either online, you know, you can now watch YouTube videos and certainly I'll be doing some um, YouTube videos in the future on specific species, so, you know, you can watch things like that but you can also read um, books on uh, species, you can also improve your field craft so that you can get closer to animals, as again, as we've already touched on. So. The camera is a, is a bit secondary. If you can improve on all those areas, it doesn't matter if the guy next to you has got a five or six hundred mil lens. If he had, if he knows nothing about the animal and its habits, you're always going to be in a much better position, you know, to get those images. And that's why I say, by starting with a basic kit and improving your knowledge in other areas, you can really jumpstart your wildlife photography and become a better wildlife photographer for it. Right, point three is a bit of an odd one really, but it's one that I know I've been guilty of in the past and it's linked to point two in the fact that you, if you gain as much knowledge as you can, so you think you know everything you, there is to know about a particular species, it can sometimes be difficult to then hold yourself back from waiting to the, the optimum moment. And what I mean by that is, it, you know, you've, you've got all this knowledge and, and you know all these facts about an animal and you just really want to go out there and take some images and you might, you know, there might be, this animal might be in the area or whatever. Ignore some of the points that you've already read up on and I, as I say, I've been guilty of this in the past, you know, when it, it, it can be quite exciting when you've done a lot of work and research and you know something's around that, yeah, I'm going to go and do it. When, you know, it might be that waiting a couple of weeks would have made it much easier and you know that you've you know you've you've read up you know that you know, the breeding season of these things is then and that's going to make it easier because they're going to be out more or they're going to be out in the open more or they're going to be you know mating or whatever and and you know that's when they come out in the open um, and this is particularly important if you're going to have to travel anywhere to take these images you really want to make sure that you're doing it at the best time because you know it might be that you only get that one opportunity so you know don't don't waste any of that information that you've got in your haste to go out and take images right now point four this brings me back to my mountain hares failure and what i'm going to say here is um point four is embrace those failures 
and what I mean by that is and I'll take you back to this instance last week where I was pretty amazed that I'd not come back with an image I couldn't understand it I didn't know what I'd done wrong as far as I was concerned my planning was meticulous um, everything was in my favour the snow was on the ground I knew where the hairs should be and in fact the hairs were in the areas I thought they were going to be but something was slightly different which meant I never got a shot and what I mean by that is and if I use this as an example generally when I've been up there in fact all the time I've been up there on Tablico you'll find that there's undercuts of the peat so there's mounds of peat and there'll be cuts underneath it and that's where the hairs tend to get now in all my time in the past that I've photographed up there I've known that if I have the wind in my face and I'm looking at these undercuts the hairs will be there they won't they won't be in the wind they'll be out of the wind so they'll be on that side and there's cuts on both sides of, of these mine, mounds where the hairs can get but they'll always be out the wind so I'd you know I'd planned that's exactly where they were going to be again if there's snow and blizzards they're going to be out the blizzards they're going to be on the side out of the wind and under these undercuts uh, they just weren't I mean every undercut I looked at through the binoculars there was nothing there and as I approached the undercut the hairs were running from under the undercut that was under my feet on the mound so they were actually into the wind and I I'm still nonplussed about how the only the only thing I can think is that there'd been a sudden wind change and previously the wind had been from the opposite direction and the hairs just hadn't moved you know they were hunkered under and in some cases there was a bit of a drift of snow in front of them they were quite warm and safe and they weren't moving anybody's got any ideas um, yeah please put it in the comments below because I'm gonna I'm, if I get the opportunity and we get some sun, more snow up there I'm gonna go up there and try again but these failures you know it can seem and especially when you think you've done everything right it can be really soul destroying you know you, you want to throw your kit in a bin and say what the hell you know I've done everything right I've, I've got all this knowledge I know where they should be when they should be there you know I know the conditions that they like all this you've planned it meticulously and uh, I'd taken a day off work I knew that it was the best day it was between two storms so you know the weather was supposedly going to be a little a lot calmer and to be fair it was but you know on the top we were still getting blizzards as we've seen so when that happens what you need to do is go away and then anal basically analyze it to the ninth detail and say right what went right what went wrong and if you look through it you may find that some, there's something out here you didn't know that makes sense why that happened why they weren't there why they were in a different position now if you do that and and that's the case then you amend that and you go back and try again now if you do if you go through and you can't find anything basically it may mean that it's just bad luck it's just one of those days and it and you, you know just go back and try again so don't be get down on yourself about it and and try and you know just take it in your stride and then come back and and you know if you need more knowledge get more knowledge but if it's not that just you know you just really got to stick in there because wildlife photography can be like that it can be one of those things where it, you know it doesn't all happen on that day even if you do everything absolutely right and you know the rarer the species um, you know the worse that is so yeah just stick at it really right before we get to the fifth and final point for any new wildlife photographers out there or anybody who's considering doing some wildlife photography I'd point you in the direction of the first wildlife photography video that I made and there'll be a link up there to it which will give you much more detailed information if you're just starting out as a wildlife photographer and you know what to expect and the things that you'll uh, will help you get your first images um, so yeah point five and this is again particularly relevant if you're a um, starting out in wildlife photography if you think about it with any sort of photography really when you start you want to spend as much time out with your camera as possible so with that in mind it is really useful if you can utilize your local area really spend some time out there with your camera get out early get out late um, test your camera test your settings 
and really come to know your local area because the thing about it is is once you know your local area and you've picked up all those skills you've picked up all that field craft you know you've picked up the, the way your camera performs in all the different conditions if you then go somewhere else where you've only perhaps got a couple of hour window you know I, I do a lot of my wildlife photography when we go on holiday up to to Mull or Skye and maybe I you know it's a family holiday so I can't I can't commit to going out every day with the camera and taking wildlife images so what I might be doing is getting up a couple of hours earlier in the morning if it's in the summer while everybody else is still in bed and that's my time to do my wildlife photography so it's limited so if I have honed all those skills somewhere else and I just transfer them to somewhere else I know that works down there so this will work up there it then means I'm much more likely to get the images that I want right I hope you've enjoyed this week's video um, I know it's a little bit of a change from what I normally do um, but it, to be fair I wanted to do it because of my experience on Bleaklow I had started questioning myself and and I'm, I should be old enough and I've been doing this long enough now to know that occasionally that does happen some you know you do everything right and it just doesn't happen for you anyway all but those things being said um, I'm not sure what I'm doing next week whether it'll be a landscape or a wildlife again it might depend on whether we get any snow up in Derbyshire we shall see but yeah if you've enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and these points that I've raised please think about them and use them in conjunction with you know other people's pointers which are equally relevant on wildlife photography try and soak up as much of that information as you can and you know it will make you a better photographer please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, yeah i will see you next week for for something else and uh, yeah i hope your shooting's better than mine